Uh, the, uh, I would like to begin by saying uh, that the title of this forum and of this exhibit might need an amendment. It I think it meant to say Polish Christians who think Polish Jews. <clears throat> you see, to make a dichotomy between Poles and Jews does not correspond to history, nor to the present moment, nor to any time when you set one group against the other, all of them <coughs> citizens of the same country. So that that was as insight <coughs> I gained as a 15-year-old, was a little bit before today, <coughs> and uh, I uh, came to this as a member of a Jewish community in my hometown of Hildesheim, in the northern part of Germany. <coughs> and we had a discussion group every Saturday under the guidance of our cantor, uh, Mr. Cisner, who came, whose parents came from Poland, and he felt that there was also a split, or at least a dividing line, between the old uh, traditional German Jewish community and the new uh, arrivals from the <coughs> East, the Polish Jews and the Ukrainians and so forth. So he gave us a task. He said, I would like you, uh, <coughs> boys and girls, to find one Polish Jew who had some particular qualities and present them to this group, and we'll have a discussion on that. And so <clears throat> I, being 15 years old and a hero worshiper, so I'm not a hero. Thank you for saying that, but I'm not. And uh, I, I fixed on a, uh, a Polish Jew by the name of Beric Joslowicz. And so I read about it, I got our librarian to give me some materials, and what did I find out? Beric Jaslowicz, yes, uh, who lived in the 18th century, was a war hero. He became, that seems almost impossible in the light of later developments in Poland, who became a colonel, put his own regiment and helped in the Polish fight uh, against the Russians during the so-called Kosciuszko uh, uprising. And that uh, uh, gave me the first insight into this uh, sometimes collaborative, sometimes divisive living together in Poland between Christians and Jews. Now, uh, the, uh, 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 this kind of, uh, of amendment, therefore, I thought was necessary. Uh, so it, in the Second World War, when the rather surprising attack came uh, against Poland during peacetime uh, under a very thin disguise or pretext, uh, Jews were in the Polish army that fought the Germans in that very short resistance where people were soldiers, sometimes with sabers, as the legend goes, fought against tanks. So uh, that's my personal interest. Now, uh, what else can we add? I'm now uh, the uh, director of the uh, Holocaust uh, Memorial Center's Institute of the Righteous, its subsidiary to the museum, and we have experienced, yes, we have interviewed people who survived and who in, in turn are perfect examples of what you see on these panels. These panels, for the most part, display individual actions of great altruism trying to save, uh, save Jews. And so my, uh, I would like to lift out uh, one, uh, one particular need of, uh, uh, of 
heroism because, as you see from the panels, uh, if you help the Jew under the edict of Hans Frank, who was at that time the commander or the commandant in one part of Poland, the so-called gouvernement, and they, uh, and in this part of Poland, as elsewhere, there were rescues. Now, I'll take one example, not because it is in any way uh, an exception to what you see on these panels, but because it's local. In other words, our friend and neighbor uh, and uh, a frequent contributor to our efforts at the Holocaust Museum was a man by the name of Ziggy Albright. Some of you may know him, may have met him and his family. So Ziggy, uh, among uh, other things, he uh, was subject of one of our oral histories, and we have his deposition there. I also interviewed him for our uh, newsletter. And what happened? Uh, his family feeling threatened constantly. That's nothing exceptional. He went, uh, his father had told the then 10-year-old boy, uh, Ziggy, there is a barn here where you might be able to hide. He was able to hide there and nobody gave him away. He then went to a farmer who, in, who his family had known by, by the name of Lutze, and he just asked for a piece of bread. And Mr. Dutzik said, come stay with us. And he hid the, uh, him and his sister for several years until it became so unsafe uh, that they had to make other dispositions. But his life hinged on the goodwill and the courage of one person who you will find in no history book. There are people, you know, there we are talking sometimes of the intellectuals who resisted. Yes, they were there too. But let us also pay tribute to the simple people who took the initiative at great risk. See the panels. If you hit a Jew or the Kaelic comfort, the penalty was immediate shooting. There was no trial. So I would like to say that here in our own community, we can substantiate what these panels are trying to say. And so I yield to my distinguished colleague.